Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. My name is Jelani and in this CSEC Ad Math Revision video, we're looking at the topic of APGPs and our main objective as usual is past paper revision. So this particular question we have here is from the May 2017 paper um, and it, sp it specifically follows a geometric progression, which, you know, I think most students tend to have more troubles with GPs than they do with APs. And it makes sense because GPs involve a little bit, you know, they, they involve ratios and stuff like that. Things can get a little confusing when you, when you dive down that rabbit hole. So let's take a look at this question here. See all the tricks that they could try to throw at you and how we could overcome them and eventually just get the entire question correct. So I'll start off by reading out the question here. It says an accountant is offered a five-year a five-year contract with an annual increase. The accountant earned a salary of fifty-three thousand nine hundred and eighty-two dollars and eighty cents and $60,598.89 in the third and fifth years respectively. Now, let me just pause for a minute. This question here, they're talking about this guy's salary and they gave us some very annoying numbers. You know, they didn't give us 50,000 and 60,000 or 55,000 and 65,000. They gave us these weird 53,982 and 80 cents. Just plain and simple, don't get too bothered by that. I know sometimes when you see those large numbers, you could it could throw you off, but this here is, is, is it, it it's just it it serves no purpose to have the question with with these sort of of figures in them. Now, don't get me wrong, they, they probably have something to do with the GP that's why they look so weird but don't worry too much about the the you know weirdness of the numbers just let's just treat it like a regular old AP sorry a regular old GP and let's just carry on with how with the question as if it were just a normal question so it says if the increase follows a geometric series calculate the amount paid in the first year and now this is a very common type of question to be asked for APs and GPs. And there's a very straightforward solution that could take a little bit long. But the good thing about it is that it's straightforward. How we tackle this sort of question is we first must build two equations based on the information that we're given. Now, when we're dealing with GPs, the formula that we use for the nth term is tn equal a r to the n minus one and we have two sets of information we have t3 which they told us is fifty three thousand nine hundred and eighty two and eighty cents and t3 could be represented with a and r where the formula would be a r n minus one well, 3 minus 1 is 2. And this here is our first equation. And we build the second equation the same way we build the first equation. We say, well, we have information for T5. They told us T5 is 60,598 and 89 cents and we could we could represent t5 through a and r where it will be a r to the n minus 1 n is 5 so 5 minus 1 is 4 and this is our second equation right here now what we have to do here is if they want us to find the amount paid in the first year well remember that the symbol for for t1 right for the first year or the first term is a so the question here is just asking us to find the value of a and if we have two equations with two unknowns 
Well, that means we have to use, we have to solve them simultaneously in order to get our values. And the best way to go about solving this simultaneous equation here is to just say t, um, equation 2, sorry, divided by equation 1. And once we do that, on the left hand side, we'll have a r to the fourth divided by a r squared. And on the right hand side, we'll have the 68,598.89 divided by 53,982.80. And when we divide it, we could observe here on the left hand side that the A's will cancel with each other. And then the R's, R to the fourth divided by R squared, those will reduce as well. The R squared at the bottom would cancel off and two out of the four R's at the top will go off as well. And what we are left with, we're left with R squared is equal to this fraction here which we can now punch into our calculator to reduce it. So I'll do that right now. Right. So I got here one point, I'll say 1.12 as my value for R. Let me just double check, make sure all my, my numbers are punched in correctly into the calculator. Yep, there we go. 1.12 for r squared. And now we want r, which is the square root of 1.12. So we just square root in the calculator. Right, so square root of answer. And we get plus or minus 1. Point, I'll say 1.06 so plus or minus 1.06 but we have to be very logical about which value of r we're gonna choose and I think you probably have a good idea of which value of r you need to choose but I'll still explain it for anybody who might not be aware there's a positive value 1.06 and there's a negative 1.06 and how we choose the value of r is we just have to recognize the situation that we are in they said this accountant's salary is increasing every year so we have to choose the positive value of r because that's the only way that his salary is going to increase every year plus if we just if we choose the negative value of r it would almost come like if the the company that he's working for is taking away money from him every year instead of giving him money which and you know, i don't think that's a fair situation anyway so we need to choose the positive value of r and now that we know the positive value of r we could now go back in any one of these two equations equation one or equation two and we could substitute that value of r to find the corresponding value of a so let's do that very quickly. Just as we um, kind of taken up a lot of space, I'm going to change to the green color to end off the question. So we say here when R is equal to positive 1.06, then we get A, I'm going to use equation 1, A multiplied by 1.06 squared is equal to 53,982 and 80 cents. So that means A is equal to 53,982 and 80 cents divided by 1.06 squared. And once I punch that into the calculator, um, right, so 53,982.8 divided by 1.06 squared. Nice. So I got here for my value of A, which is his salary in the first year. 
$48,044. And we could round that up to 50 cents. And there you have it. That was his salary paid in the first year. That's how we tackle this question. Um, very interesting question because they didn't phrase it in the usual way they phrase APGP questions. They, they made it more, you know, practical. So I could see it tripping up a lot of students. So hopefully you were able to get something from this. Now, let's move on to the last part of this question really quickly and just breeze through that. Um, yeah, so let's, let's go on to that really quickly. So the last part here says it wants us to calculate his total salary earned at the end of the contract. So we'll go back to get all the information we need from the other page just now. But let's just analyze what this question is telling us. They have this word here in all caps, total salary. You think back to your primary school days when they talk about total, they mean addition or another word they use was sum. So what we're trying to do here is we're trying to sum up the salaries that he been, he's been paid over his five-year contract. So what we do, we when we hear that word sum in APGPs, we think about the sum of the AP or the sum of the GP formula. And in this case, we're dealing with the sum of the GP formula, which will be A, R, N minus 1 over R minus 1. Now, we know how long his, his, his contract was. Let's go back and see it. It says a five-year contract. So we know N is going to be five. We just found A as $48,044. And we also have R as 1.06. So we're going to just take all that information and substitute it into our question. So let me just... I'll just copy the A because I, I can remember the 1.06, but not that 44,000, 48,000. Right? So A is 48,000, R is equal to 1.06, and we know N must be 5. So sum of 5, 48,000, $44.50, multiplied by 1.06. To the power of 5 minus 1 all over 1.06 minus 1 and again now we just take our time and punch this into the calculator and we should have our answer And there you go, I have my answer now. I have $270,831.31. This is the sum of all the money he has been paid over the five-year contract. Right? So that brings an end to this question here. Um, if you made it this far in this video, First of all, let me just say thank you for sticking around. And I really hope that you were able to learn something from this video and get some good information out of it. If you did find the video useful, you could consider giving it a like. And if you want to see some more videos ahead of the exam, um, I know the exam coming up really soon, but you could still subscribe. I'm going to have another video coming out tomorrow as well. So you could check out that video as well if you want to see that. And yeah, so once again, just thank you for sticking around and hopefully I was able to help you out and help you learn something in this, um, in this video here. So with all of that being said, I'd like to end this video for today and I will see you in the next one.